Number 10, Roman sea curses. Okay, the first century, a great place to begin with most things that are horrible and new to humans. Romans did things a little differently. We can't figure out yet how they engineered aqueducts or how that many people watch Colosseum battles. Yeah, I can't watch an arm bar during UFC, let alone bring my family to the Colosseum. Be like, that's a lion. That's a, that's a guy getting eaten by the lion. Yeah, it's him. Ancient Roman naturalist Pliny the Elder, he wrote a book on natural history. And in said book, this go-to, might I add, on ancient history, the Elder wrote about half-human, half-fish creatures that he called Nereids. Hmm, that sounds like uh, mermaids, avatar, I don't even know, Atlanteans? He even added to his first observation detailing that the human parts of said body were covered in rough scales. Human in appearance, but still fishy nonetheless. Awesome. Guess we have those to look forward to? The Elder also recalls a seaman who would climb ships at night and then sink them. Kind of like Aquaman, only he wouldn't help people. He would actually put them in life-threatening situations. But still cool, he probably looked like a bad climb on that ship, you know? Number nine, sirens, AKA mermaids. Here we go, figured I'd talk about these ones as well. The mythology surrounding sirens, it's interesting, but I don't know how I feel about it yet. We have to talk about it in the comments. I don't think we have Atlanteans flirting with sailors per se, but I do believe there's some sort of creature that's hybrid human fish, you know what I mean? On his first trip overseas in 1493, Christopher Columbus claims to have seen not one, but three sirens. Yeah, he even wrote about it. He said they rose well out of the sea, but they are not so beautiful as they are said to be. Okay, he's rhyming, that's always fun. Thank you, Columbus. For their faces had some masculine traits. That's what he added afterwards. I would think I'd be a very cute mermaid. Honestly, thank you so much. I could probably trick Christopher Columbus and be like, hey, come to this island. Just wave in and do my little fish thing, whatever. So what did Christopher Columbus see? I mean, when it comes to correctly identifying places and or people, obviously Chris can get confused. He's not really our go-to guy, I don't think anymore. So historians believe Columbus may have seen a few manatees and not mermaids. Either way. I'm you know what, both are kind of terrifying to see out of nowhere. Number eight, the Kraken. For ages now, sailors from Norway and Greenland have shared tales of this giant sea monster, and you've probably heard about it as well. Or if you've seen the hit franchise, Pirates of the Caribbean, you've probably seen it in IMAX. Tentacles big enough to pluck you out of your boat. This thing is terrifying, right? We all know about the Kraken. In 1857, Danish naturalist Jepeda Strinstrup found a large squid beak, and soon after was sent parts of another specimen from the Bahamas, okay? So something was out there. He concludes that the Kraken is real, and that this was proof, and that these parts were maybe part of a species of giant squid called Archituthis dux, which translates to ruling squid in Latin. Very little is known about giant ruling squid, of course, because they're so hard to track, but we did get a photo of one in 2005 and a video of another in 2013. Number seven, Yellow Brick Road. Deep sea divers may have found the road to Atlantis, or Oz, one of the two. Back in May 2022, this bizarre path was spotted in the Pacific after an exploration vessel, Nautilus, caught the rocky formation near Hawaii. Just a nice place of unknown everything in that ocean. Awesome, we love exploring. The exploration team said in a recent interview with Wyon News that our corps of exploration have witnessed incredibly unique and fascinating geological formations while diving on the Lili Ukulani Ridge. The 90 degree fractures are most likely the results from, you know, a big eruption from a volcano a long, long time ago. The Marine National Monument, or PNMM for short, is the largest fully protected conservation area in the world. So let's, let's not litter anymore, maybe, I don't know. It covers more than 580,000 square miles in the ocean. So far we've only discovered 3% of its seafloor. So I'm sure there's many more discoveries of roads, apparently leading to Atlantis. Let's hope. Number six, the Great Lakes Griffin. Back in 2018 in Lake Michigan, Diver Steve Leibert found what he believed was the holy grail of Great Lakes shipwrecks. Now this is exciting to some, I can't even look at photos, I have thalassophobia. The Griffin sank back in 1679, divers have been searching for this beauty for a very long time. As a kid, Steve himself, Steve Leibert, was talking about the shipwreck when his history teacher stopped and said, hey who knows, maybe one of you will find the Griffin. Imagine that, your grade 8 teacher tells you somebody will find a ship one day and that somebody was actually you? Yeah, at 76 years old, Steve discovered the wreck. It was 2018, but his research began 40 years ago. Leibert began diving back in 1981 after an amazing teacher got him motivated. It took a long time to track down, of course, but 
I think it was worth it, we can all agree. If you're in any Great Lakes, keep your eyes open for, you know, 50 foot long sh ships from the 1600s. They're always lurking below. That's why I can't swim. Like I put goggles on, look down, and see the top of a ship. I would throw up, I would literally, that's it. Maybe because I'm like afraid of heights, and for some reason when I'm in like the ocean or like a lake, I feel like I'm up high. Maybe that's what it is. Number five, toxic waste. Okay, we mentioned a yellow brick road. It's always fun, it's a fun time, a creepy looking discovery, but certainly not harmful like this next one here. Yeah, for the back nine, we're gonna crank it up a bit. Sometimes we find literal barrels of waste. This dump site here was discovered off the coast of LA. It's 3,000 feet deep, and these ROVs, these deep ROVs found around 27,000 barrels of waste. Looks like the climax of a Breaking Bad finale. It's just, what is going on down here? What happened? Who put these here? The 2021 discovery was deemed staggering. Yeah, that's one of many words I can say on YouTube, for sure. You can literally see in these photos like this aura of toxic waste, like just a, a plume of evil coming from these barrels. That's brutal. Recycle, please. Number four, the frilled shark. Also alarming, just in its own natural, terrifying way. Back in 2004, marine biologists discovered a dinosaur. Yeah, they discovered the frilled shark. It was lurking around 870 meters below the surface. Now this one looks like an eel, almost. It's so scary, I don't know. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long, and they fight like daredevil. They can hunt in complete darkness. They don't have to look. They just use their senses, and they don't use sunlight. I almost got lost there while I was doing that bit, but if I was a frilled shark, I'd be dead on still, I'd be fine. They don't need to see anything, so remember that next time you're skinny dipping. Unless you can hold your breath for a long time, you won't actually run into the frilled shark, so don't worry about that. They're only found a mile below the surface, and again, they're rare as hell. Have you ever dealt one of these? Are you a diver? Have you seen a shark? Comment down below some of your diving nightmares, just so I can read them, and then go, oh, I'm never going in the ocean ever again. That's what I like doing. I like going, oh, I'm never doing that ever again. That's what Reddit's for. Number three, the deepest shipwreck. The USS Johnston was a US Navy destroyer which sank during the Battle of Samar back in 1944. It was after a battle with a large fleet of Japanese warships and it went down. Now, Victor Vescavo, who is one of the few people who has made the dive into the Marianas Trench, that's why his name sounds familiar, he was one of the people who first stumbled upon the remains of this sunken warship. The ship's remains were first found in 2019 and was known as the deepest known shipwreck as it was found 6,456 meters deep in the Philippine Sea in the Pacific Ocean. I lost track of what I was saying. That's, it's so deep, I can't even imagine. That's like a mountain, you know what I'm saying? We have a new record holder, believe it or not. Yeah, the world's deepest shipwreck was discovered four miles underwater in the Philippines. Yep, this is now the world's deepest shipwreck that was ever discovered. This is terrifying. Uh, I wanna move on right now, I'm gonna throw up. Number two, loud ocean heat. This is just naturally and so scary, here we go. How depressing is this one? Okay, back in 1991, scientists lowered these massive speakers, like nightclub subwoofers, almost, into the waters at Heard Island. Also, like Heard Island speakers, is this a bit? I wish I was making this up. They made the pun for me. They did my job, I'm upset. These speakers emitted low frequency sounds all across our oceans. Now these signals were later picked up by receivers near California and Bermuda. And these signals contain information on the temperature of our oceans. Our oceans absorb more than 90% of energy left from global warming. Doesn't help when we lower 27,000 barrels of into it. So let's just maybe stop that for a bit. There were a few scientists who at the time were also concerned about how these low frequency sounds may be affecting our ocean life. Yeah, what does that sound like to a beluga whale? And finally, number one, the Vasa shipwreck. Back in 1628, the Vasa sunk within 20 minutes of setting sail. This is a tragedy. This claimed the lives of 30 souls on board. How tragic is this? Now, the Swedish Navy launched the ship August 10th, 1628. It was once considered a high-tech warship, even referred to as spectacular. So what the hell happened? Well, the first rush of wind caught it off guard, started making a little topsy-turny, and the second gush of wind sank it. Just like that, there was no war, there was nothing going on, just a bottle of clink, and then it went down, so fast. It's like the scene in Trek where it sinks fast comedically, but this was real life, so it wasn't comedic at all, it was actually rather terrifying. There was a crowd around and everything to send it off, but the 64 bronze cannons that were installed during the rushed process of building the warship, they were deemed too heavy, evidently. The lack of oxygen in the water allowed for its rediscovery to continue its story. That's how we know how she went down. The Vasa was built with carvings all around the king at the time, King Gustav II. So so when the wreck was discovered in 1961,
one, 95% of the wood was still intact. It's deep, dark, and cold. Yeah, nothing really, uh, nothing affects it. Humans focusing too much on naval warfare, rather on if the ship can actually stay afloat. That's a definitely a human problem. I can't tell if this is a curse or just humans being humans, but yeah, stop installing 64 bronze cannons. Number 10, mysterious kayak attack. Thalassophobia is the fear of the ocean, but it's not just that. It's the fear that creeps up when you can't see the bottom of a river or a lake and don't know what's lurking beneath. Considering only 5% of the Earth's ocean has been explored, I feel like this is a pretty valid fear in a lot of ways, amplified by this video. Check it out. Okay, so we don't actually get to see it, but I think that's what makes this video so terrifying. You can only assume that it was a shark, but we don't know for sure. And I can't even comprehend how terrifying it would be not being able to see how big or where this creature was, especially considering the ferocity with which whatever it was tried to attack him. This could have been one deadly encounter. Number nine, saving a nurse shark. craziest part about this video for me is the irony of this encounter. Had these humans not shown up, this shark probably would have died without being able to get food or protect itself because it was literally trapped. But had humans not become little trash mongrels, then the shark wouldn't have been trapped in this way in the first place. So it's just like a weird, crazy circular cycle that I think this video highlights really, really well. And I, I hope those guys keep doing what they're doing, saving the ocean one piece of plastic at a time. Number eight, otter on the run. This next one is so surreal. I'll let the video speak for itself. Come on up, bud. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Not only did these people get up close and personal to an otter, which definitely is on my list because they're so cute. They hold hands so they don't separate from each other. How adorable is that? Immediately after they got to see a massive orca swim close to their boat. In this one instance, humanity and nature walked hand in hand as this otter fought for its life. But then this guy just can't move because otherwise this poor otter will meet a bloody fate. Does the boatman just let this poor guy succumb to survival of the fittest? Thankfully he doesn't. The video kind of ends on a definite cliffhanger, but rest assured the vessel's owner, John Dornella, eventually drove the boat to a safe distance. And then eventually the otter decided to jump ship. Pretty cool. But it turns out that the otter wasn't just fleeing from any orca, oh no no. John discovered the orca's ID number and found out it was the largest in its pod. This guy did this otter a huge solid, that is for sure. Number seven, nurse shark. So fun fact, I actually swam with nurse sharks a while ago, one year on vacation, and it wasn't as dangerous as swimming with sharks sounds because nurse sharks are actually pretty docile. They just kind of chilled out at the bottom of the sand pit and the actual, the guides had to go down and like rustle them up. And they were like, no, leave me alone. I was sleeping, bro. Very, very chill experience. There were also giant manta rays, which was kind of the thing I was the most afraid of because of the whole Steve Irwin fiasco. But still, nurse sharks kind of live up to their name, but still, Put some food in your hand and you might see a whole other side. Thankfully, the woman in this video is okay, but it does just go to show. Maybe don't feed the sharks, even if their name sounds disarming. Number six, whale to the rescue. It would be surreal to even see a whale that close, but to have one save your life? There are no words, check this out.
this is such a mystery to me. This is this is real life flipper, except instead of Elijah Wood and a dolphin, it's a whale. Like a whale went, oh, that thing, whatever it is, it's in danger and I'm gonna let it know. The like the innate kindness this animal was capable of. I just don't even know how to wrap my mind around this. It's not like I haven't even met humans that kind. That's not true. People are pretty great. It's not like we have an IQ test we can make for animals to take, but we know they have very strong instincts and we know that they've shown signs of emotional intelligence. So I don't know guys, whales might have just become my favorite animal. I just think it's kind of surreal. I mean, we know that um, the size of a brain doesn't necessarily correlate with like intelligence, but in terms of the ratio of brain size to body mass, it can. So who? knows but either way this video is so surreal and i can't even believe it exists number five baby beluga speaking of whales beluga whales were the reason i wanted to go to places like marine land so bad when i was younger you know before i realized that they actually weren't that great they look like the perfect mix between a dolphin and a whale and they just look like they're always having a good time they look smiling and curious and i just love them this video is no exception this man just kayaking living his best life with a beautiful perfect and curious little beluga whale just comes up to visit and he even gets to pet him Ah, my dreams realize. See, we don't even need places like Marine Land to experience this kind of natural wonder. Though it looks like this little guy was camera shy because it just took his GoPro and then gave it back. Like, again, mind blowing because somehow this blue whale knew, oh, wait a minute. This guy, he wants this back. I'm gonna go get it. Like, I just, I can't even. This is insane. What do you guys think of that? Wow. Number four, close encounter of the whale kind. I held my breath when I first saw this clip. A warning to anyone going scuba diving in an ocean. If you see a flurry of fish just bolting it to the surface, get out of the way. These divers came so close to getting too close to the inside of a whale. Something that will come up later. In hint. Stunning and terrifying. What a great mix. When not one but two massive whales breached the surface, those guys got so far out of there. They were like, wow, this is great. Whoa. And then they just fled to the boat. I would too, for sure. Ugh. Creepy, creepy, creepy. But beautiful at the same time. Like, I don't even know what that would be like to experience. Uh, anyways, guys, before we get to our top three, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to stay a part of our hive. Uh, we appreciate all the help that we can get. And we appreciate any and all love you show us. So thank you so much. Number three, an octopus lending a hand. Can we call this story a love story? Ah. Uh I'm not sure. I feel like that's strutting dangerous waters. As I mentioned earlier, we know humans have barely, barely scratched the surface when it comes to exploring the ocean, but that means that a lot of creatures still haven't met us. I mean, chances are, sadly, they've met our garbage before they've seen us. But this interaction between two curious beings just goes to show we aren't the only ones asking questions. Number two, deflate before it's too late. This next clip is my worst nightmare. I also think this is the first time I've ever mentioned Flipper twice in one day. Well, at least in the last five years. I can't remember the last time I saw that movie. But there is that scene where he's just floating in a raft and it gets attacked by a massive shark and just starts deflating. Once you watch this clip, you can understand why it immediately made me flash back to that moment. I mean, what are they gonna do? They are literally minutes from being shark meat. This is not how I would like to encounter such a magnificent creature. I would prefer not at all, or at least safely behind my TV screen during Shark Week, because love me some Shark Week, but wow. They're standing there filming. Dudes, call for help. You got a phone. 
And number one, a man inside a whale. Of course this is number one. Remember how I said we were gonna come to this later? Well, here it is. Michael Picard, a lobster fisherman in Massachusetts, almost met death inside the mouth of a whale. This is the closest real life experience to that scene in Pinocchio we all have nightmares about, you know, when they're like fighting the whale and they end up inside it. Terrifying, spoilers if you've never seen the movie, but also, why haven't you seen the movie? Michael was diving for lobster when he suddenly heard a loud bang and then everything went dark. He said it felt like getting hit by a freight truck, which I mean, isn't really far off. He thought, and I quote, what the heck, did I just get eaten by a shark? But no, a shark's mouth is not that big and I don't feel any teeth, unquote. Next thing he knew, he was flying through the water at an incredibly high speed, thinking he was going to die. Of course, how terrifying would that be? But after 30 to 40 seconds of him banging on the whale's mouth, he finally spat him out. So to be clear, he wasn't swallowed by the whale, but he was just hanging out in his mouth, Dorian Marlin style. But still, like how crazy is that? Not many people get to say that they were eaten by a whale and live to tell the tale.